and I just got off a call and we were discussing imposter syndrome and we were talking about how this is something that we've kind of dealt with our whole life and up until like a few years ago I didn't know the phrase imposter syndrome and I remember reading it and I was like wow this is something I have felt in so many instances throughout life and I would say probably since childhood but I didn't really know how to phrase it or what to call it or how to describe it but I think imposter syndrome is just something so many of us go through and we don't even realize it because it's not it's not something I've heard a lot of people talk about so something we wanted to bring up with you guys is imposter syndrome and how it can kind of affect our life and how we deal with it so let's get right into it i feel like the issue of imposter syndrome is so common in your 20s especially when you are right out of college it's so easy to feel like you're not good enough to be where you are in your life right now and that's not a good feeling because you kind of just spend a lot of time doubting yourself and questioning your place at the table instead of really thriving and really living up to your full potential. But I think it's nice knowing that you're not the only one who feels that way. And if you've ever felt this way, trust me, you are not alone. In fact, I've brought this up with so many of my friends and after bringing it up, they were like, wait, I feel this way too. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm not the only crazy person out here feeling this way. So I think it's really important to like mention these things to your friends because they may not, they may be feeling the same way, but they may not bring it up because it's not a very comfortable thing to talk about. I know for me, I feel it at work a lot and I'm still working um, remotely. And when you're surrounded by people who have a lot more experience than you, you have to remember that they've been doing this or they've been in like a working environment for years and years. And I have to keep reminding myself that I've not even completed two years out of college and now that i'm saying it i'm like wow i only have i have just under two years of experience then i think about all the projects i'm in charge of or all the things that are my responsibility and i'm like who who decided it would be a good idea for me to be responsible for things like i start doubting myself a lot i feel like i should not be responsible because i'm not smart enough or i don't have the skill set or the knowledge but i have to keep reminding myself that even though i may not have as much experience as other people i still i'm still a knowledgeable person and i think that even within that year i've learned so much so it's i have to constantly remind myself to not doubt myself but i feel like i doubt myself all the time at work and it doesn't necessarily come from a place of lack of skill because when i talk to my managers or when i talk to like my coworkers, it's usually always positive feedback so then i'm confused as to why i'm feeling this way or that's the moment when i realize like i start reflecting on the work i've done i'm like actually like this was good work and actually i was able to handle the situation really well so it kind of rem like i have to remind myself to not treat work like this absurd concept like I have I am 23 years old I wasn't born yesterday I do have those social skills I do have those skills when it comes to interacting with clients and at the end of the day we learn these skills way before starting like a official job so I think just reminding myself that I have I carry a lot of valuable experience is something that helps me get through my uh, imposter syndrome I also know it's very common for minority groups to face imposter syndrome more and I have read articles about how that is also one of the factors that stops a lot of the minority groups from progressing further because they start self-doubting more often than, than other groups. Fortunately for me, I work in a very diverse company so I personally have never felt like I'm the only person of color in a meeting or I'm the only woman, but I have had instances in my life where I've walked in and I look around and I can clearly tell I, I'm, I don't look like other people in the room. Basically, I feel like I'm the only person of color or I'm the only woman and that can 
be very anxiety inducing because it, especially if you're not expecting it. I remember for one of my college classes, I literally walked in and it was very clear that I was the only person of color, which is fine, but one of the side effects of that is anxiety. And when you feel anxious, it's very easy to go down a rabbit hole of just doubting yourself. And I think that for me, at least, that's kind of where a lot of my imposter syndrome stems from is if I feel anxious, I'll start doubting myself and I'll go down a rabbit hole. But I think over recent years, I've gotten so much better at giving myself a pep talk and really like playing up my strengths and telling myself that I deserve to be where I am and I deserve a seat at the table. And honestly, sometimes I wish there was an easy fix for this. I wish there were, there was like step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, it's fixed. But there isn't. And that sucks, but I think something, another thing that I've learned over the past few years is talking about these things with your friends really helps. Because if you keep it bottled up inside of you, it can feel very isolating because you're not sharing your experiences and when you don't share your experiences other people are less likely to share their experiences so you could all be going through the same thing but if you don't share it with each other it's isolating and there's a saying that there's comfort in shared experiences i don't know if that's a saying i could have just made that up but i think there is a lot there there's so much comfort in shared experiences because I think as humans we want to know we're not the we're not crazy we're not the only person out there who feels this way so i believe for me one way of dealing with imposter syndrome is talking to other people about it and listening to their experiences because everyone experiences it from a different perspective too so maybe the perspective i'm experiencing it from is different from someone else's perspective so it's interesting to know like what other people are experiencing and where they're coming from which is why i think having that solid group of friends or people you can talk to is very essential in dealing with imposter syndrome and another reason why i think imposter syndrome has been magnified during the pandemic is because it's hard to find that especially if you're new to like an area or a city it's hard to find friends when you don't have any interaction when you don't go into work so you might be experiencing the same thing as everyone else who's joined at the same time as you but you have no idea what they're going through because people honestly people are just not that open over camera and half the time people don't even have their cameras on which i'm guilty of as well so essentially i think that finding the right people to talk to about your struggles with imposter syndrome is honestly one of the best ways of dealing with it i feel like our experiences with imposter syndrome have been kind of similar and consistent whether it was in like college or whether it's now like in the working world and i it's more of a sense of not feeling like you're good enough to be in the room or that you deserve to be there so that doesn't necessarily apply to any one particular setting right so for example like i'm still a young person in the workforce and i'm surrounded by a lot of like older more experienced people who are like experts in the field so sometimes i'll be in like a meeting with people who have like 20 30 years of experience doing what they're doing and here i am like two years out of college and i sometimes have to give input or um, i'm asked a question about my opinion and i don't feel like my answer is good enough or that my answer deserves to be heard because i don't have all those experiences Either that or sometimes I will feel like I don't even deserve to be in that room or in that meeting and I'm like really intimidated the whole time I'm just sitting there with my camera on like so afraid to move and just sitting very still because I feel like I'm the youngest person there, I'm the one with the least experience so why was I even invited, why does it even matter that I'm here so it's it, it doesn't have to be like this huge one-time thing like feeling like the imposter or feeling like a fraud it's more like small consistent things that build up over time to feel this way and to feel like you don't really have enough to bring to the table and it can also get a little frustrating when you're around people who 
are so overconfident and kind of cocky almost about the experiences they have. Sometimes there'll be these like young guys in the same room as me or in the same meeting as me and they probably know even less than me sometimes or know just as much as me, but they'll play it up and act so confident and act like they're the expert where when they probably know just as much as I do. And that kind of hurts even more sometimes because I know what I'm capable of for myself. And the fact that sometimes I feel afraid to show that to other people because they might see me as less capable or less deserving to be heard. But then these other people come in very confident, very high and mighty and cocky about what they know and try to play that and, and try to play that up even if they are making no sense and they're saying nothing of relevance or importance. So this is obviously something that both of us are still working on and it's never, I don't, and I don't think there's like a one size fits all solution for it, if there's a solution for it at all. But I think it's a lot about just building up your confidence and building up your self-esteem and trusting that you're in the room for a reason, you got the job for a reason, you're at that table for a reason, and knowing that someone saw potential in you and someone saw what you're capable of and asked you to be there and thought you were worthy enough. And if someone else can see our worth and what we're capable of, why can't we see that within ourselves, you know? So I think we're, at, at the end of the day, we're our own biggest cheerleaders. So what we have to offer, what we have to say is definitely important. And if we believe in what we have to say, then other people are gonna take us more seriously. And I think that's gonna help us long run in our career, in just life in general. And it's not just about like the workforce necessarily too. I remember feeling this way in college when I was in like a leadership position and sometimes I questioned why I deserve to be in that position or why I was given that position over other people. And many times I did have to just like fake it till I make it and show myself as someone who knew all the answers, even if deep down I didn't know all the answers, but you know, as like a leader and as someone people look up to, you have to at least pretend to have it all together, even if you don't or else people are not gonna know who to go to or where to go for all the answers. So it's definitely a vulnerable position to be in, any sort of leadership position. And I learned a lot about like what I was capable of. So I definitely think that looking back, I, I had more figured out than I thought I did at the moment. At the moment, it seemed like I knew nothing at all and I had none of the answers, but I can see why people kind of saw me in that position and saw me as someone who had it together because I was really good at faking it basically. So yeah, I think that that's another important thing to remember is that even if you don't feel like you deserve to be there or you're qualified to be there, just honestly fake it till you make it and enough, like if you and if other people can see you as capable and confident, then eventually you'll start to believe it yourself too. But yeah, at the end of the day, we all have some sort of imposter syndrome within us. And I genuinely don't believe anyone on this planet is 100% self-assured, 100% self-confident all of the time. I think everyone faces it at some point and there's always gonna be people more qualified than you, more experienced than you but the fact that you're there and someone chose you to be in that room, be in that position, what really speaks volumes as to what your potential is and what you're capable of. So I think that's it's definitely important to see that as a part of your worth, basically. Again, if someone else can see why you deserve to have what you have, then you should be able to see it too. So it's just a matter of reminding yourself of that over and over again. And I have to remind myself of that all the time as well. Um, and, and also at the end of the day, no one's an all knowing human being, you know, like everyone has different things that they're knowledgeable on, but there's other areas that they might not be as much of an expert on. So everyone has so many different skill sets to offer and bring to the table. 
So all of you guys probably have your own special, unique skills to bring to the table. And a great way to feel confident about yourself is to recognize those skills that you're bringing and feel good about them and know that no other person in this room in this planet has those skills. So at the end of the day, it's just really important to keep reminding yourself what you're capable of and remind yourself everything that you've accomplished thus far that has brought you to where you are. And yeah, it's like a, a work in progress and eventually, um, even if we can't get rid of imposter syndrome completely, we'll reach a point where we're no longer actively feeling less than other people about it. So we hope you guys enjoy this video. If there's anything else you wanna hear us talk about and hear our opinions on, let us know. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.